So I just woke up, I hopped out of bed, I had my first cup of coffee for the day, and I sat down to play a little bit of Blitz, and in one of my first few encounters, I actually got paired with a Grand Master, and this is what happened. I played the move Pawn to E4, and he played E6, the French defense. Now, sensing a YouTube video coming a mile away, I decided to play C4, hoping for an Orthoschnapp Gambit. And that's exactly what we got after D5. I played C takes D5. E takes d5, and then instead of recapturing this pawn right away, I played queen to b3. This is the orthoschnapp gambit, and what I'm most excited about is I finally have an actual excuse to make a video on what to do if your opponent plays the declined variation. We're talking about the orthoschnapp declined here today. I'm going to show you a lot of the tricks and traps that both sides need to be aware of uh, in order to play this, and I'll show you a scheme that has worked really well for me and has scored me quite a lot of victories. And if you like it, you can help me out by subscribing. We're getting very close to 40,000 subscribers. Your subscription would mean a lot to me. Now, if you've never seen this opening before, I do just want to mention very briefly that the main point is if they do accept your gambit, you are going to be playing bishop to c4, immediately targeting the f-pawn. So you gambit a pawn, but immediately black already needs to make an awkward choice. Uh, where are you? How are you going to protect this pawn? You'll notice I got the database here, so you can see all of the most popular ways that black will continue. And you're almost certainly going to need to put this queen somewhere awkward. Either you block in this bishop, Either you block in this bishop, or you go to this square, which is normally reserved for a knight. But in any case, uh, and I should warn you, this is a dubious gambit, obviously. But in any case, you might get a very interesting aggressive attacking game as black. But hey, what happens if instead of that, they decline, they play knight to f6? Well, you want to play pawn to e5. And after knight to e4, you want to slow down. This is only move six, but black has already set the first trap. Now, this is one, as long as you know this one, you can survive this with white <laughs> very comfortably. But uh, you do want to play the correct move in this position. And I would highly recommend pawn to d4. There are alternatives that have been played. Uh, for example, you might consider knight to f3. I think this would be a very principled, logical move. But as you'll see in this game, and in a lot of cases, you actually want to put that knight on a different square in this variation so that you reserve the option of playing f3. f3 would be a good way to get this pesky knight out of e4. And it is a very annoying knight because it's actually making a threat that a lot of players with white have not seen. And a lot of people, I, quite a lot of people, 1,800 out of 7,300 uh, people have played knight to c3. And this is a mistake, and black can already take over this game and get a very comfortable, if not winning, position. And the problem with this move, it looks like, and most people are not punishing it, by the way, <laughs> the problem is not knight takes c3 and you take back. This is exactly what white wants. This is the structure we're playing for where we might be able to get a huge center. The problem is bishop to c5 immediately targeting this f2 pawn and there is not a convincing way for white to get out of this problem obviously there's no d4 you can imagine if our queen was on d1 we would have this d4 option which we would normally have uh, but we don't our queen is on b3 so we have to come up with something else and if you decide to capture this knight thinking okay maybe i either just ignore this but okay black now has time to castle so that's not as convincing as it would normally be well maybe i can go and try to get this pawn back well now after knight to c6 you can recapture the problem is you've only gotten the pawn back and it's actually black now that might be able to take over the initiative black has a lot more minor pieces out black is one move away from castling white is a long way from castling and also after the move knight to d4 you can end up in a lot of trouble. Bishop to f5 is coming. This is something white needs to avoid if you play this opening. So let's run it back. You get to this position. You play queen to b3. They play knight f6. You go here. They play knight to e4. The move you want to play is pawn to d4, preventing this threat altogether, and now you got nothing to worry about. And this is exactly what happened in my game. Uh, and my opponent played the most popular move here, knight to c6. Now, keeping in mind that my main idea is to keep this square available for my knight so I can play the move pawn to f3 at some point. Uh, I decided to pin this knight. The knight was attacking my d-pawn. I pin the knight, and I keep this square now available for my knight. This is my method of developing against this opening. And there's one more line that I kind of want to deep dive into. What my opponent did in this game, 
Uh, while not the most popular, is definitely a sensible approach. He played bishop to e7 and just decided to castle. This is a no-nonsense approach. This is how you play chess. You develop, you castle. Um, but I do want to point out one more tricky line that both sides have opportunities to mess up. And that is in this position after bishop to b5, there's this very tricky move, bishop to d7. And for just a second, it might look like black has blundered a pawn. Maybe they just quickly played bishop d7 because they were worried about getting doubled pawns and now they can take back with their bishop or whatever. But it turns out this pawn is not hanging on d5. So this is the last thing that you need to resist. And if you resist this, it turns out that it's usually black that goes wrong from this position. You should definitely not take the poison. You should definitely play knight to e2, which is covering the c3 square. This is very important so that when you play knight to c3, you have extra protection on c3. Why is this important? Because if you do decide to grab this pawn right away, you're going to get into a lot of trouble. And here's a couple ways that black can punish you. They can play this check, bishop to b4. And the problem is you are either going to block somewhere. Notice how you can't block on c3 like maybe you would like to. So okay, you block with a piece or maybe you play king to f1. Well, this is going to be black having fun. I will show you white having fun in just a minute, but this is black's last opportunity to have fun if you grab this poison. Now, if you go here, this is one way to block. It doesn't really matter how you block. You can imagine a position where black trades everything off here and then you could castle right away, or black could even consider trying to castle on the queen side and just bringing a rook immediately to the d file. Something like this would be really strong for the opponent. Even though you're up a pawn, your king is on e2, you're going to be exposed for the rest of the game. This is 100% to be avoided. So if you do take this pawn, a mistake, and they go here, maybe you're like, okay, you can't do that. I go to f1. Okay, sometimes in life you can take a pawn and then go to f1 and be fine, but this is not one of those opportunities. And there's actually another tactic for black, and this is all kind of happening because your king is exposed and it's black that has been able to develop more of the pieces, and black can improve. He can play a move better than all of this, a super tactical, very nice move, but not necessarily for us. Knight takes d4, uh, a fantastic shot. Now, obviously, all of these knights are hanging, but you're not going to be able to take either one. Whatever you take, you're going to run into all sorts of trouble, and it's black that's going to be able to get the upper hand uh, in this game. This is to be avoided. Do not, after d4, you pin them. Do not take this pawn. That is poison. What you want to do is play knight to e2, and now you are threatening to take this pawn. Because now in any line where they go here, you have knight to c3. So for example, for whatever reason, and this has been my experience uh, as well as it's backed up by the database, bishop to b4 is the most popular move. But this is already very close to losing for black. But for whatever reason, this is what people seem to come up with. And after your knight goes to c3, we are renewing our threat here. We are going to take. But now we've also added this option that potentially at some point we could remove the defender of a bishop. And I think it's for this reason that a lot of players with the black pieces decide to capture here. This is something I've experienced uh, quite a few times. You can see three of my games here have gone this way. But black is just losing in a position like this. Something like this uh, is very, very good. We are attacking this pawn. So if they castle, <laughs> one thing we could do is take this pawn. Maybe it's not even the best move, but taking this certainly looks like an excellent option. And now this thing is attacked and we are winning. Another trap that you want to keep in the back of your mind if you are white is let's say this happens and let's say they play bishop to e6. And I'm going to hide the database now so that we don't uh, reveal one of the tricks here. There is a trap that you want to know. Whenever this bishop is on e6, this is the trap that you want to look for. Sometimes this knight runs out of squares. You can play f3, kicking the knight away. You're not terribly worried about queen to h4. That's easy to block. We got our knight here defending the g3 square. And if they go to uh, g5, you can hit him with h4, and uh-oh, the bishop is blocking one of the retreat squares for the knight. This is one of the traps that can happen, not only in this position, but it's something you want to look for in a lot of these positions whenever there's a bishop on e6. Maybe you can trap their knight. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and anyways, this for whatever reason, if you play knight e2 here, if you resist taking <laughs> immediately, if you see this as an issue, you play knight to e2. For some reason, you will most likely get a winning position. Now, let's get back to the game. And this is my game against the Grandmaster. Now, just here it is in its completion. I played d4. He played knight to c6. I went here. We can check out the database. That's cool. Uh, and he played bishop to e7. 
Now he's just getting ready to castle. He's not trying to trick me with bishop to d7 or anything. So I played knight to e2, uh, and he's going to castle. Now, I have protected this pawn. My knight goes here. I'm waiting for opportunities to maybe play f3. Like if you play this right away, maybe I can play f3. I'll take a look at it uh, if I get the opportunity. But he decides to castle, and I just go ahead with knight to c3. Um, and now, after bishop to e6, I'm no longer making this threat. I did play f3. Obviously, if he does hop back here, I'm going to play g, uh, h4, and his knight is going to get trapped. But because of what I've done, he now has this option. And we get this very typical pawn structure, so I'm happy with it. If I were given a lot of time, I'd be doing very well. If I was able to, let's say, castle, and then play f4, f5, f6, I would be able to get a very strong attack. Now, my opponent is a very good player. He understands that. He plays the move pawn to f6 and he strikes at the center now before i'm able to castle before i'm able to really solidify it i would love to play f4 i'm a little bit worried uh on f4 that he'll take this way and i'll have a little bit of a harder time castling so i decide to take this he takes back and i get castled now from here we both are uh going to be playing for our trumps in my mind i was very happy because i'm thinking you know okay i'm gonna get this knight up i'm gonna be one of the first players to get to this e file that's what i'm gonna be fighting for but my opponent also came up with a very nice plan of his own which began with this move knight to a5 so black is going to be playing for something a little bit different uh, after i move my queen he installs his knight on c4, and what black is going to be telling me is I am going to hope to at some point provoke you to give me the two bishops. So uh, this is going to be kind of the battle. I'm playing for like the immediate um, activity that I can possibly get. He is going to be playing for the two bishops in a long-term advantage into the endgame. And this is kind of what happens. I play knight to f4. His bishop goes back. Uh, I play rook to b1. And now I'm targeting this guy kind of through an x-ray. I might take your knight and then I might be able to win your b-pawn. And after he goes here, I had kind of my main plan of playing uh, rook to e1. And now I have some opportunities of maybe removing your bishop pair. And this is kind of what happens. He plays c6. I take the knight. Now he's achieved his objective, which is to get the bishop pair. And then in the long term, do something in the center. Maybe it starts with some sort of... Uh, pawn avalanche coming at me maybe at some point there's a c5 coming and strengthening one of these bishops maybe he can do something with the light squared bishop i don't have a light squared bishop maybe he can find a good home for it someday that's what he's kind of playing for and i'm playing for the immediate pressure i got this half open file i got stuff going on here and i got this file for now and here is where i actually play my one major mistake but it's this is a mistake and it's really not obvious why and my opponent didn't see it um in the opponent i think in the game we both had the same idea i was thinking i'm going to be very happy if you take which is what happened because i still get to maintain all of my trumps i got the e file uh, i still got a lot of pressure and i have ways of improving my bishop maybe i can bring my queen in at some point i'm already envisioning things going very well which is indeed what happened in this game but it turns out knight to e6 is actually a mistake which means this is a chance for my opponent to capitalize on it and Maybe you can see the first move here that black should play, but I will say, even though there is a winning move, it was it's really not as obvious as it might first appear. And I'm going to turn on the computer just so you can see. Um, after queen to e7, my opponent is super winning. This is minus three. This was the chance that he missed, but it's not entirely clear at all because obviously I've walked into this pin. So at first it looks like I would just major blunder if I take this. Uh, I get checkmated in one move. Okay, huge blunder. But it's not clear what happens after queen to e2. And in this position, I've, re, uh, I've defended my knight. And now if he goes after it, which would be the way to attack it again, I do have this move knight to f4, and I'm going to avoid losing material. Just to give some example, like the queen can go away. Let's just put some random moves on the board. There's a lot of possibilities here. But just to give you some sort of an example of like a random position that could occur... I am not down any material here. I still have like the e-file, I guess, but I might lose that soon. But more importantly, the two bishops in this position are now going to shine. And even though material is equal, okay, at some point he's going to play like c5. Suddenly, somehow these guys are going to come to life and make my life miserable, uh, which is kind of remarkable to me that it's just so good for black, despite the fact that it doesn't feel like too, too much 
has gone wrong. So I just wanted to point out that moment. Instead, we were both on the same page and we got this position and now I'm happy. Uh, now I'm feeling very good. I'm feeling very comfortable. And my opponent decides to play rook to e8. And I'll let you get into my mind here for a second. I considered two moves. The first move I considered was queen to e4. This is the way to continue to put stuff on the e-file and defend my rook. There's also um, an idea of trading first, and I'll let you guys do this in your head, with the idea that then you can play bishop to f4 and potentially try to win a pawn. So is this the time? Should I get greedy? Should I go for the pawn? Or should I simply continue to improve my pieces and play queen to e4? Well, I'll tell you what I did. You can pause if you need more time. I played the move queen to e4. And this is actually the best move. And white actually has a uh, tremendously good position. I might even be close to winning now. At this point, my position is very good. If instead, I got tempted to go for this pawn, and I played bishop to f4 here attacking this thing, I might have had a small cold shower moment if I decided to grab this guy. Because unfortunately for me, this rook was defending the back rank. So something like this would have uh, just gotten me checkmated if I, I probably wouldn't have taken the B pawn had I got this far. But uh, that is something that's very important. But if I just keep control of this E file, things are going very well. Now after queen to D7, I found a tactic. So hooray for me, a very exciting moment. I found a tactic and it works. And in this position, we're starting to see that a lot of the pieces uh, are getting overworked for black, which is why I have this opportunity now to play rook takes b7, uh, a fantastic move. And suddenly there are four captures that all make some sort of logical sense that, that need to be considered. But in any case, uh, I'm going to get a winning position. I just cleanly won a pawn and all of a sudden black's pawn structure is uh, a lot more damage. So I'm going to have opportunities to potentially win more pawns in the future. Now, my opponent definitely played the trickiest move, which is to take back. Uh, but just to give you some other examples of what could happen, you know, if you take this way, I'm going to be able to go like this uh, and then either keep your rook from coming in. Maybe I can give this check first. Who knows? Uh, if instead you take one of these guys, well, then I'm taking this guy. And after your king comes up, uh, it looks a little bit dangerous, but I actually should be able to move my rook somewhere really far away in one direction or another. And notice how the rook can't even come down to the B1 square. It's protected by my queen. Uh, so no matter what they do, this is going to end up working out for me, obviously. If here I take this guy, um, this will be good for me. He's not able to take my rook right now. Now, uh, with that all being said, after queen d7, I hit him with a tactic. Fantastic. I win a pawn. He takes this way. Now, again, I have to be a little bit cautious. And I thought to myself, I, there's two moves to consider. I can take this. I can take that. Which one am I going to take? And it doesn't take too long maybe to figure out uh, which one is correct. But, you know, during a game, there's always... Chances to go wrong, you always want to make sure you calculate things correctly. I did take this rook, which is correct. If you take this queen, unfortunately, after this trade, I'm getting hit with more issues on the back rank. Rook to b1 would pin my bishop. So instead, I took this rook. He went up, and I have another dilemma. So at least it's tricky. I'm winning, but at least it's tricky. And I spent some time here before eventually just going back and defending my bishop. The threat for black, of course, being he's coming in, and I don't want him to be able to win my bishop. I spent 20 to 30 seconds here trying to see if I could do something heroic. If I could somehow take this pawn, he could give this check, he could win my bishop, and I'm like, ah. I spent time here. I was trying to find some sort of checkmate because I have, you know, a couple different options in this position. If there's a mate here, maybe I could be a hero and win this way. If you put this on the computer, it'll just say zero, zero, zero. I'm down a piece. It doesn't really matter. I can go here and they can do like whatever. Uh, but I think the computer line is like, whatever. You just make a draw. Um, during the game, I couldn't quite tell. But I spent, I spent a little bit of time seeing if I could take that pawn. And then I went back and defended this bishop. Um, my opponent did give this check. And here, he starts to go a little bit wrong. The rook goes over to h1. But suddenly, it's black's pieces that are starting uh, to lose a lot of... Uh, the connection they're kind of going out of all of his pieces are sort of out of play i'm up a pawn and i have the safer king so i play bishop to f4 defending this pawn it's always nice that your rook is protected and maybe my next move is queen to e4 kind of completing the harmony of my pieces maybe i also have some ideas of uh, queen to b2 trying to get a rook to the seventh rank which could lead to some sort of issues for him but now i'm doing well and sadly here my opponent made a mouse slip and I believe this was a mouse slip. He played queen to e8, so I took the queen. I think what my opponent was intending on doing was to play queen to e7. But in any case here, I actually 
feel kind of confident that my position was strong enough that maybe I could win uh, in this blitz game, even if he hadn't mouse slipped. I'm assuming the opponent meant queen to e7, where I probably would have played queen to e4. I don't know. Maybe there's computer wants some other moves, but something like this would have been uh, a tremendous position for me. And hopefully I would have still been able to win the game. So I don't feel too bad about the mouse slip, but hey, that's the orthoschnop declined. If you do like it, please make sure you subscribe and let me know what you think about it. Okay, bye. If you're feeling trapped like a queen, no blunders, only sacrifice and see well, you may have the blues. Never be a chicken when you lose.